TV. Yeah, er er to. everybody's going to the gas station and putting their gas in. They don't have any other choice, so now why would they need to advertise? You're right. They don't have choice. But in the meantime, you're filling up your vehicle and you're paying for a political position, for a political candidate that you just may not support. And that money, that pain for that support should come from the individual citizen. No one else. No one else. We, the people, is not negotiable. And when the Supreme Court and legislative legal tiptoeing around the topic created an artificial person with corporations, they allowed our country to become fascist. And American people really need to open their eyes and look at it. And when I get these petitions signed, a hard copy signature, eyes are being opened. They know it already. And also, I get people to say, is there anything I can do to help? Can I, can I donate money? Can I, can I help you get the signatures? I'll take it to work and help get signatures. People saying things like this. I say, here's the paper. You mean, you mean there's I'll actually all the help I can get. You mean there's actually people out there that want to remain or become free Americans? Ninety-nine point nine percent. I've gathered at least okay more than two thousand signatures in Congressional District Seven and Congressional District Eight in each congressional district. And I'm telling you, 99.9%, these people look at the amendment, they smile, they sign it, I got a hard copy signature, and then some of those people are so tickled with this amendment, so proud of this amendment going on, they offer help. And that's how I get more help for people gathering more signatures. Yes. I carry extras with me so they can take it to work. Yes, I give them my phone number and my address, and I've had people drop by and say, look, I filled up a hundred for these signatures, do you have more? Yes, I have more. When you're talking about the issue, you and I met at a breakfast, breakfast club, right, Mike? Yes, sir. Well, he saw me. I'm a hemiplegic, I'm in a wheelchair. Do you know both my own? I'm retired before my time, I call it. Yes, sir. And uh, one thing about being a hemiplegic is different from being a paraplegic. One side of me is dying, is, is going. And it happens slowly. So when the doctor said, Paul, you got five years to live, my accident was on Halloween, 2003. So there's a party at my house every Halloween when I prove the doctor's wrong. And I've lasted another year. And yes, I, there's a lot of pain to it. Yes, I have morphine pills and things like that that I do not take as the doctors tell me to because I hate taking pills. And when you talk about someone wanting to control a medical condition by the use of marijuana, and someone who does not support that, you show me that person and I'll show you someone who has not had some real pain in their life. Right. If it'll give them any belief whatsoever, it's worth it. Well, uh, again, it's it's more than just. I appreciate the medical, but uh, you know, I volunteered for Vietnam. I smoked pot for forty years, and I'm not a criminal. I uh, I I have ripped off nobody. I've stolen nothing. I I, you know. That's uh, that's the way I choose to relax. You can take Valium, but I wouldn't touch it. There you go. There you go. I wouldn't take a pill if I don't have to take a pill. You know, and that's the pro that's, that's a problem I've got. That's a problem I got with medical marijuana. Why should I go to a doctor and pay him to give me a script for something I can grow in my backyard? Why should I do that? I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. Well, well, the people that are against it are obviously people who have never been in some real pain. And you've seen some real pain, and you've lived through it. And you and I had to talk about accidents and things that we've been involved with. 